Good evening, good evening, good evening, St. Kitts and Nevis. Good evening, Leeward Islands. Good evening to the OECS. Good evening, West Indies. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in your corner, this part of the world, wherever. Welcome to another edition of On the Ball here at WinFM 98.9. I am Troy B. Mills, your host, and it is indeed a pleasure for me to be here with you tonight. We must start on a sorrowful note, actually, and we extend, as we extend condolences to the family, friends, relatives, colleagues of the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater. He passed last week a tremendous loss to St. Kitts and Nevis. He has been the president of the St. Kitts and Nevis Olympic Committee from since 1993, I think it was. And he was the manager of Solid Waste. He, well, I don't know what I could really say <laughs> about Bridges. I think he would have impacted everyone's life, not only here in the St. Kitts and Nevis region, in the Caribbean and further afield, through Olympianism and uh, he, well, he has been toughing it out, but the Almighty decided, well, Bridges, it's time for you to come home. And that was the case last week. When I got the news, it really Im impacted me heavily. And uh, it so happened that a few weeks before, at a general meet an extraordinary general meeting of the St. Kitts and Nevis Olympic Committee. When the idea came up to do some renaming in Bridges' honor, I as president of the St. Kitts and Nevis Table Tennis Association had the privilege and the honor to actu actually move the motion that that naming be done and some tweeting was done and then the resolution was shifted and tweeted a bit. And then on behalf of the SK entity, I had the privilege of actually, after originally moving the motion to rename the building, I was able to second it when it was tweeted on behalf of the St. Kitts and Nevis Table Tennis Association. And I felt extremely proud of doing that because... I've known Bridges for some time. I had the privilege and the honor of serving on the first Olympic Committee for St. Kitts and Nevis. That's the first SKNOC when it was installed back in two, 1993. If I remember correctly how it happened, I think there needed to be a certain number of national associations, national federations affiliated with the international parent body. And in 1992, St. Kitts and Nevis became members of FIFA. That's the international governing body for FIFA. So that gave us the number we required. Before we had track and field, we had boxing, we had cycling, we had volleyball. Uh, I think there might have been five and we made six. And I'm, and I'm subject to correction. And uh, I was the president, the vice president of the St. Kitts and Nevis, actually SCAVA, the St. Kitts Amateur Volleyball Association back in 92-93. So I represented SCAVA at the AGM of the Olympic Committee when there was the elections and I was voted on as an executive member. Uh, Bridges, he was the voted on as the president and he has held that position for the last 32 years or thereabout, from 1990, 32, 33. Uh, how, how is the math? Um, 93, that's 7 and 4, 31 years. Uh, ah. Since the inception of the St. Kitts and Nevis Olympic Committee. I know other persons were fighting to get that done. But we just didn't have the number of national associations affiliated to their respective national bodies. As soon as the St. Kitts and Nevis Football, Football Association, um, I, I'm not certain if the name 
I'm wondering if the name was in the sink. It's Anivis Amateur Football Association back then. I'm not certain. But anyway, when they became members of FIFA in 1992, a few months after 1993, then we were able to join the Inter International Olympic Committee after having a St. Kitts and Nevis Olympic Committee. And uh, from what I'm did research, Bridges, he would have worked with the ladies in the netball, the St. Kitts and Nevis netball that won the Caribbean Championship back in 1978. They would have won two of them, and I think he worked with them from what I gathered. And he played cricket, he played football. Uh, he was the manager of the Okola Tegramantine Arts Theatre. So he would have touched quite a few persons' lives. And uh, tonight's program is in his honor. And we are going to be having three, perhaps four, sets of guests. We are going to be having Mr. Wilman McCall. Well, actually, we are uh, to be having perhaps a member of the family. I'm not too certain. I don't think they'll be able to make it because of the circumstances. And that they told us they'll try. But if they don't, I understand that. It's just but a few days since Bridges has passed, and no doubt they're trying to comfort and console themselves. And uh, so we may not have, we may, we may not have a member of the the family here with us. And we are going to have in Mr. Wilman McCall, a retiree of the Solid Waste, St. Kitts and Nevis Solid, Solid Waste Management Corporation. And I think he would have retired the same time as Mr. Bridgewater. And uh, so he's going to tell us a bit about Bridges from the work perspective, how Bridges was as a worker, as a manager. He was the manager of the Solid Ways. And then we're going to be having Mr. Delwyn Delaney, president of the St. Kitts Nevis Athletics, because obviously Bridges, as the president of the SKNOC, would have been working extremely closely with the St. Kitts First, it was St. Kitts and Nevis Amateur Athletic Association, SKN, tri SKN AAA, but that name has been changed to St. Kitts and Nevis Athletic, SKNA. And uh, we were also to be having the St. Kitts and Nevis Olympic Committee to close off the program. However, they have indicated that they had to have a, an emergency meeting, so they wouldn't be able to make it this evening. And I understand that. And part of it has to do with the planning of and the assisting of the funeral of Bridges, which I'm hearing is going to be sometime, and this is off the record, don't quote me, sometime next week I'm hearing. Uh, we have to wait and see for something official to come out. And, uh, But notwithstanding that, we already have Mr. McCall in the studio, Studio B. He's anxious, roaring, and ready to go. So perhaps we... Before we go to Mr. McCall, let us get in some golf news. And again, for those who may not have heard, we lost Mr. Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater last week. And we say condolences to him. And this family, this program, tonight's edition of On the Ball, it's in honor of the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater and you can call in at any point and uh, give your your views of of Bridges extend condolences to the family and uh, words of encouragement if you would have had interaction with Bridges tell us about it Bridges as this sportsman he represented St. Kitts and Nevis in football and cricket I know of definitely. He was into the training, the netballers. I know he played for rivals, and I think I heard it was a chapel, but we'll find out. We'll get a little more information on that. He represented St. Kitts and Nevis in cricket. 
and I was speaking to my uncle, Uncle Neville, I'll call him Neville Weeks or Manny Weeks, some who may know him, he's in the US. I was speaking to him as recently as just before the program, and he indicated that Bridges, along with himself, would have represented St. Kitts and Nevis against a tour in Australia team, a youth team. They were a youth side. Uh, he said he was going to school. He was a, a batting all-rounder. He tried a little thing with his, with some off-breaks. That is uncle level. But Bridges was a gently, extremely, <laughs> extremely gentle medium face. That is what he said. And I, I see Mr. McCall laughing. So I might as well bring in Mr. McCall and say, Good evening, Mr. McCall. Uh, hold a sec. Let me sort out something. My production manager, Jamster, is going to sort us out with a thing or two. You hearing me? Yes. Good evening. Oh, good evening, sir. How are good you? Good evening, and uh, good evening to you. I'm doing very well. Good evening to your audience, the On The Ball uh, family who joins you every uh, Tuesday evening. And uh, thank you for inviting me for such a, um, a solemn event as this one. And of course, I do hope that, uh, you know, I can shed some light as to, the, the, uh, as to Bridges uh, and his contribution to the... Uh, economic and uh, uh, social development of, of, of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, particularly the people at Solid Waste Management Corporation. So let me say thank you, Troy. I hope you have your thing worked out already. Uh, yes. And thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> Mr. McCall, for being here. It is indeed an honor. Uh, this is Virgin Territory for you. I know you've been here at WinFM Studios uh. before. Especially when you were talking trash. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the first time you've mm. been here on this new program, mm. On the Ball. Uh, no, I was here once. You were? Uh, in fact, yes, I did uh, come here at one point when um, Edgar Gilbert uh, passed. And uh, there was a program extending condolences to him. And I was here at that point. Oh, in okay time. then. That's right. You're, you're, you're frightening me. That's you were in the studios here, but... On the ball, which started last year, October. Okay, so it wasn't on the ball. It wasn't on the ball. But uh, you you're the one who invited me then, so I, I thought Okay, it yes, was. Uh, okay. but this program, On the Ball, it's a new program, started okay. in October. All right, thank you. And we're encouraging sponsors. So uh, if you could encourage anyone, Mr. McCall, because we do need sponsors for the show to stay on the air. Mm -hmm. And we're getting extremely good reviews from here in, within the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis okay. in the Caribbean and further afield. So we invite sponsors to come on board. And you can give us a call, 466-9586, and our marketing department will gladly be able to work with you. But before we get into you, Mr. McCall, I got into a little about Bridges, and we say happy birthday to those who are celebrating birthdays today. And uh, happy birthday in advance, who will be celebrating between now and next week, Tuesday, and I know of Nurse Arnold in Sandy Point, the mother of Ambassador Her Excellency Jacinth Martin, Carleen Morton, former PS. And uh, they, that's her mom. She's celebrating 90. I saw her clip with her playing music on the keyboard. And she was playing like she's about 18, 19, 20. Mm. As a matter of fact, there's, she has a brother called Patsy Mack in Sandy Point. I came up in the same vehicle with him when it, um, this evening. And he said a few times, he would, when both of them would go someplace, they, his friends would always be heckling him. Why, Patsy, you always have some new chick, some young chick with him, with, with you. And <laughs> Miss Nurse Henry would reply, youngster, what, my new manners, he is my younger brother. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I saw, and she's looking really nice for 90. She's looking... I'm um, very, very good. And I'm not going to say that she's from SP where the best be. Uh, I'm not going to say that at all. <laughs> but we say happy birthday to her. Those who are celebrating anniversaries today, happy anniversary. Or between now and next week, Tuesday, happy anniversary in advance. Those who would have celebrated between last Tuesday and tonight, happy belated. And of course, those who would have lost a loved one today, condolences to you on behalf of the management staff, board of directors, myself and my family on the ball and the production 
team here for On The Ball at WinFM 98.9, especially the family, friends, relatives, colleagues, co-workers, peers of the late Alfonso Bridge, Bridges Bridgewater, and those who would have lost someone, a loved one in the last few days. Condolences to you as well. But before we get into you, Mr. McCall, let's get into some golf as we join Zeke Percival, president of the the St. Christopher Glo Golf Club, as he give us an update about golf here in St. Kitts. On the PBA Dental April Monthly Meadow Golf Tournament played at the Royal St. Kitts Golf Course on the weekend. We had closest to the pin on hole number 15. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let us fix this and start again. Now, results from the Premier Dental April Monthly Medal Golf Tournament played at the Royal Sinkets Golf Course on the weekend. We had closest to the pin on hole number 15, Elvis Bowen. Closest to the pin on hole number 9, Everton Harvey. We also had logos went to Adrian Norford. Overall, fourth place net went to Christopher Hensley with a score of 72. Third place net went to Gary Coxgrove with a score of 71. Second place went to Zeke Percival with a score of 70. And the champion for April in the Premier Dental Monthly Medal went to Mikey Ryan with a, goal, a net score of 60. Eight. We also have leading in the E Zone Cup in the E Zone Cup tournament with the grand finals to be played at the Four Seasons Nevis on May 20. We have leading the pack with 14 points, Adrian Norford in second place, Michael Davis with 12 and a half points. In time for third place, Elvis Bowen and Zeke Percival with 11 and a half points, and Robert Byron with nine points. So the grand finals for the E-Zone Cup will be played at the Four Seasons Nevis on May 20th. Again, congratulations to Mikey Ryan for capturing the Premier Dental April Monthly Medal. Champion, champion to Mikey Ryan with a net score of 68. Thank you very much, Zeke. And congratulations to all the participants in golf here in the the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, and especially those who would have had any little victories in whatever area. And golf, uh, I think the golf ball is a little bigger than the tennis ball, table tennis. It's a little, a lot heavier than the table tennis because I heard of a joke, the older men get, the smaller, smaller the their balls, balls get. From yeah. football and basketball, the big balls, when you're teenage and 20s and 30s into tennis, lawn tennis, in the 30s and 40s, and when you're getting into the 50s and 60s, then you start playing golf right. where the ball is maybe an inch in diameter and things like that. Do you play golf, Mr. <laughs> McCall? No, I, I know nothing about golf. In fact, um, I heard some scores recently, and I began to think that the person with the lowest uh, number you know, had... had, had Lost the whole thing, yes. not knowing it was the other way around. <laughs> oh, <laughs> know, the smaller the number, the better player. That is correct. Yes, yeah. Some persons, the persons who take more shots to get the ball in the hole. Yeah, they, they are, lose. They lose. They are losers. Yes. So if I get it in, in five shots and you get it in, in ten, I would have won. That is correct. Well, you know, those are lessons I'm learning, mm. and uh, uh, though it's late, I think I'm glad I understand. And maybe one of these days. I might try my luck at hitting a golf ball and um, see how it works. I wasn't too good at hitting cricket ball, <laughs> but at least I tried. Well, I, that's one of the games I haven't really dabbled in. Uh, I, my version is you hit the ball halfway around the country, you get lost, you find it. Mm -hmm. And then you hit it the other half of the country, you get lost again, and you find it again. Yes. And you keep doing that for two, three, four, five days. Well, but I, I'm hearing it's extremely relaxing and It's a like very that. technical game from what I've heard. Uh, how do you have to take into consideration the wind direction, the wind speeds. Uh, if I hit a ball into the wind, how, you know, you have to calculate your distance, how far it might go. And uh, various other things you must look at. The, the topography of the, of the, of the landscape, uh, whether the hole is down or up, <laughs> and uh, all sorts of things you must um, think about. 
Um, I didn't know he was that technical until I went with a friend of mine once by the name of Bill Harris, and he was an ardent um, golfer. And um, I, I began to learn at that point. But I didn't know the numbers up to that point anyway. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> and I, I know you've come from a cricketing background, and your son, Norval McCall, uh, I guess he got his skills from the mother in terms of cricket. Well, you could <laughs> always say. <laughs> I would concur. I would concur. <laughs> and I know he's yeah. into commentary now, football yeah, well, and cricket as well. Yeah, I, 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 I used to, you know, try to get my entire family involved in sports. Mm. Uh, when they get from school, they can go on the street to Lyme with the guys on the corner. They must go on the play field and play. If not then find something home to do. And uh, there's always, there are always the books, which they've been in all day at school. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that uh, my thing was that they must go and play. A little Enjoy recreation. Themselves. Yeah, a little recreation. And when you come back, you get something to eat, you take a shower, and then you hit the books again until bedtime. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's the way. I so when I got home, I would ask a couple of questions. Where is Sean? Where is Alwick? Where is Noval? Well, my daughter was always home, so I didn't mm -hmm. ask her. And if the answers were not, were not what, uh, to my liking, I jump in my car, I go and look for them. Somebody in trouble. <laughs> well, yes, because <laughs> I, uh, I didn't like being on the street, liming, mm. doing nothing. Um, if you're not on the playing field, you should be home, basically. Oh, okay. Uh, basically. And I know Ricky in, is into music. Well, Ricky was once into cricket. He was into cricket? Yeah, he played for the St. Kitts youth team in, boy, what year that was now? I'm forgetting all the years now. But he played he okay. went to Montserrat with the St. Kitts youth team. Oh, that, that's wonderful. Yeah, he um, uh, didn't do too badly. Had just one out of, one out of about three or four games. Um, and then, you know, he was let go from the team after that. But mm. um, the, the, the we, we have always played together in terms of our, uh, a family. And... Um, the, well, the mansion team was a family team, basically, because we all, you know, we, we all grew up together, basically. And um, I was glad to be around those guys and to have my children inserted into the mansion's team. And then Norval went further. He went to play for Keon, where he was the captain. And he played the first division, where he got into the St. Kitts setup. And um, he, he, uh, well, he moved on from there. He was hoping to go further. And so mm. even though I tried to get him to forget the cricket and let's go do some university degree or something, he wouldn't leave. And so he, he took about nine or ten years with the St. Kitts team before he went and, and, and do his studies. Mm. And by the time he do his studies and come back, they say he was too old. He was thir 32. Wow. <laughs> yeah, too old for the St. Kitts team by that time. Mm. <laughs> well, that's what they said, you know. I, I, I could understand that. Yeah. Uh, you're listening to On The Ball here at WinFM 98.9. I am Troy B. from Mills. Your host, I have the privilege and pleasure to be with you tonight. And in the studio, we have Mr. Milman McCall. Though we were talking sports, he's actually here in his capacity as a retired employee of the St. Kitts Solid Waste Manufacturing Corporation. The management, the management Corporation. The management. That's right. And uh, with the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater. And tonight's program is in honor of Bridgewater. And Bridges, as he more affectionately called. And you can call us, 466-0989-662-0989. And you can extend your condolences at any point in the program and any fond memories you would have had of Bridges. And we go straight to Mr. McCall. Mm -hmm. How long did you work at Solid Waste, Mr. McCall? Um, I had 16 years with Solid Waste Management uh, Corporation. Um, starting at, uh, in 2002, when they just um, got started. I, I got started with them. In fact, they, they took over from the health department term, in terms of uh, waste collection in 2002, in May mm -hmm. of 2002. So I started just about that time. And um, Bridges was the one who you know, was leading the pack, and he, of course, uh, realized at the time that um, he needed staff. And so he graciously allowed me to join his staff. I was quite uh, touched by the, you know, by him allowing me because, well, I applied uh, for quite a while. And so I was called and told that uh, at least, you know, the job is available. And so when we, when he started in 2002, remember we started from the health department. So Bridges started with you in 2002 mm -hmm. and he was the manager at that point? He was the manager and he just took over the collection system mm -hmm. of the health department because, you know, that, that system is where the garbage collection, Correct. you know, was uh, was 
was a part, was ingrained into the health department. So that was detached from the health department, handed over to Bridges. And uh, what he inherited really were, were, was quite a, a few old trucks used, many of them not very well maintained, and uh, uh, workers who were you know, not well, um, I don't want to criticize anyone, but not well trained in terms that they drank on the job. They were a pack of guys who really, um, you know, um, did a lot of drinking and, and so on. Plus, he inherited a system whereby garbage was allowed to, people, people were allowed to throw garbage on the street or uh, s certain areas in Basti and in Sandy Point and various parts of the island. And then the guys would come and, and uh, collect the garbage. However, he thought that was not something good. He would like to see the place a, a lot cleaner. And so he began the process of not only um, um, whipping the men into, into good condition, but to change the system of garbage collection in St. Kitts. Now, that meant that he had to also um, engage in trying to change the perception of people about the, garbage. The culture. The culture. People's attitude toward garbage at the time was not good. And even when we got deep into solid waste management and when a lot of things were changing, people were not willing to change because the, the work has still got a lot of kickback on how they're dirty, worthless, drunken people. And um, I myself go out on the truck once or twice and a uh, fellow had me well, well told off, well, look what you come to, you all <laughs> dirty garbage man. So, but you see, we trained our guys to get those things without responding negatively. We were, we were trying to get our fellows to, well, look, this is the way they are. They are not right, but, you know, you have to exercise restraint. And so Bridges set about to help to change the culture, not, even, n not only of the people in the, in the community, but the people who worked for solid waste Employees. Management. Yes. So that was uh, a big thing. And that is where um, Talking Trash came in. That is where Waste Matters came in. Because there's a way that you, you can speak to your workers. You can call them into meetings and have one-on-one -on -one with them. But you can't call the general public into a meeting and tell them, hey, you don't treat the guys well. So WNFM was uh, a, 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 um, a worthy ally of solid waste management who, of course, um, went along with us and, and, and cooperated with us in terms of getting that culture changed. The way you speak to, the way you deal with these men, the way you throw your garbage down as if you, you, know, you want somebody to take it up and they're not worth anything. Um, there was one system, for instance, in the public market, uh, down the public market, where the guys had to actually stand in the garbage to clean it. And I thought... Stand in the garbage? Yeah, yeah, you have out. to climb over a fence, jump in the garbage, the truck will back right up to it and you throw the garbage out while you're standing in it. Mm -hmm. So rats and centipedes running all over you. And I thought that was very unhealthy. But Bridges said, no, it has to stop. And so something was done to change. We tried a couple of things. We placed a bin outside the, uh, uh, the marketplace. Uh, but persons came from Sandy Point and Challengers and Molyneux and filled that bin. Wow. And the people from the market couldn't get a chance. <laughs> anyway, I, I think we're getting far for it. Well, we're not talking about the systems that bridges yeah. would have put in place. Exactly. Uh, well, I'm just at solid ways. That is correct. So you're, I think you're, you're going on because that's all mm -hmm. part of changing the culture. Changing not the only culture. of the workers, mm -hmm. but the public, the me and the Jamster and the, all the listeners we have uh, to, to yes. on the ball. The, the, and, and, you know, Talking Trash was quite uh, uh, one of the things that he used to effect change in the general public themselves. Then there was another program called Waste Matters, which he initiated as well. That one was a pre-recorded um, uh, five-minute broadcast, uh, which, was what, which will run on ZIZ and other stations around St. Kitts. And this is basically to educate the general public about the whole question of waste, to let them know that waste matters, to let them know that it's important that the waste uh, that we want to collect the waste and we want to collect it a certain way. You must package it, you must hold it until we get there. I, and if your garbage smells, it's because you're not doing something right. And so all these um, lessons and, 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 and things Bridges was trying to get out to people, that we must do the thing right so that the workers could, you know, wouldn't work under conditions that are so adverse and dangerous to their health. And um, like I said, he... He not only spoke to the general public, but he spoke to the workers themselves. Some people thought the workers were themselves smelling badly. And so he went ahead 
And uh, he, I, there was a budget of about close to $50,000, which was just given to me to establish some bathrooms at the, you know, at the landfill so that the guys, before they leave, they can have a shower. Because the bus drivers were saying, look, the fellows coming on the bus, and they smell us out of the way. So when they see them um, at the top of the and road, they, they will go and leave them. them. Right. And we just wanted to change that perception. So a budget was, uh, was established, and we had bathrooms in, um, um, put there for the guys to refresh themselves and clean up before they go and catch the bus. And um, like I'm saying, he wanted to change the entire culture. <laughs> you know, I, I, can't, I can't say it um, enough. The idea was to change the culture, not only of the men who were working with him, but of mm -hmm. the general public who we would like to, who we wanted to accept them. The, you mentioned the landfill. Mm -hmm. I remember a part that was an issue we've had for forever, especially the burning of the products and the smoke drifting towards Keys, Connery, wherever. And uh, I remember Bridges being on a, a radio program mm -hmm. and he was speaking about the work doing over there. And uh, he said, and I quote, over there is so clean now. Yes. You could eat over there. <laughs> yeah. I remember him. And yeah. that's, that's the only thing that stood out from, from me in that program because... Yes. You know how it is with garbage, and then again, the mindset of us kitchens coming from that place where you're driving, you're smelling the foully garbage. Yes. And then when it's being burnt now, the smoke again and th that sort of well, stuff. You know, if prior to solid waste management, I, I, I used to go over the landfill to take garbage and so on. And there will be uh, some roast dogs all filled with, you know, air, four feet in the air cattle, various animals. And there was one guy who was with me, working with me. And he, you know, he vomited. We had just eaten. We stopped in Conway. We had something to eat. We went down to the landfill. And the guy brought back up everything. So when Bridges was saying that um, um, you can eat down there, that was a statement, given the fact that prior to that, it was really unbearable. There were, there were rats running all over you know, the, the, uh, the people in Conway. People were getting asthma. And um, the, the rat population had gone out of work. Remember, there was a, um, a, a, like a, a coconut walk close by. And that's an area where rats could really, you know, from the landfill, they went there and then they really got onto Connery. And so it was a revelation. It was, um, it was a transformation of the landscape uh, uh, um, down at the landfill. So when he said that you could eat there, it was really true. We used to have lunch. We used to have parties there. We go over there on a weekend. And we, you know, we have drinks. And the fellows would come and drink and have music and play games, dominoes and so on, at the landfill. That was not possible several years prior to that. You couldn't have a social over there. And, uh, and it had gotten to a point where it was transformed to the point where parties were kept at the landfill. You we used to have lunch at the landfill. Mm, you could remember what year that might have been? When we had parties? Uh -huh. When you started having uh, parties, as it up were. Up to uh, 2000. And Three, four, we started having parties there. Then the fellows got fed up. Then they went to Connery by Miss Ferdinand. We had parties there. And then we used to do it elsewhere. We used to do it at the office in Basti after a while. And, um, you know, we just moved it around as we went along. Sometimes we go on the beach because he wanted to get the guys into a social uh, frame of mind, not just work. So they worked hard. And he, he said, there's a time when you have to get away from work and, you know, be an individual. So sometimes we go to the beach. We did hikes. We did a hike down at um, Wingfield at one point, you know, and the entire uh, uh, membership was invited. And then we had a walk up to Beerfords at one point. So there were social programs implemented by Mr. Bridgewater. So it was not just to work them and to, and, and to, it, it, it's to the, the, the total development of the individual. Not only that, we, we had services. Um, you know, there was a service held every year by the Antioch. By the, but no, the Apostolic Faith. Apostolic Faith, yes, yes Lord Johnson, Johnson Avenue. Avenue. That's right. Uh -huh. And that started about uh, 2004 5. It's still going on, uh, as far as I understand. And the idea was that this gentleman, uh, Pastor Hazel, mm, he was, Hazel. Yeah, yeah, he was a health inspector at one point. And he knew the, the way that these guys lived. And uh, he, he thought, let me do a service just in their honor. So he started with solid waste. Then afterwards, it expanded to solid waste Nevis. 
then to parks and beaches and the health department, and I don't know how large it is now, but that's the, uh, you know, that's the extent of it. The idea was to have a service in the honor, and all this was part of the program. And Mr. Bridgewater used to uh, um, um, make sure that that service is held and that everybody attended. Uh, transportation would go on the island, collect people, and bring them to the service. And then there was a, a dinner thereafter. We had a lunch, and that we would just sit and have lunch. Solidarity workers and everybody else. Sometimes the government ministers would come and, um, and visit with us. See? And all this was because bridges. He didn't have to do it, but he thought that the development of the individual was key to the success of solid waste management. You're listening to On the Ball here at WinFM 98.9. Yes, you may not, you would not have been hearing about scores and performances for the last few moments. That is, bec few minutes. That is because we have with us in the studio Mr. Wilman McCall, a retired management staff at the Solid Waste Corporation, where he would have worked with Mr. The late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater, and tonight's on the ball program is in honor of the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater, a sportsman. He represented Saint Kitts and Nevis cricket and football. Not only that, he would have hosted a show, I think it was Sports Rap. Sports Rap. Way back oh. when on another radio station back in the 80s. Saturday afternoons from 1 to 3, I think it was. Somewhere so. about there. And then I know at a point that Carl B's Liburd and Aubrey Rogers would have taken Continued on it, hosting yeah. it subsequently. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not mistaken, I think that would have started with Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater. Saturdays, 1 to 3. And I always wonder, why Saturday? Saturday is a busy day when people up and down mm -hmm. doing all kind of things, shopping and cleaning and things like that. But that's the thing. You're doing all of those and you're driving and you're listening. It. And the late Bridges would have been hosting it. He has contributed tremendously to various facets of society here in St. Kitts and the Nevis. And we're inviting you to call in 466 989 662-0989 or if you're not in a position to call you can send me a WhatsApp 668-2055 and of course if you're outside St. Kitts and the Nevis you could prefix you will pre need to prefix that by 1869 and we invite you to call share your experiences with the late Bridges console the family extend any words of comfort to them and of course supplement what Mr. McCall has been saying in terms of bridges, building solid waste back in 2002 from where it was when it started to now. And you would have retired. I think you and Bridges would have retired at the same time? Uh, no, uh, I retired prior to him. Okay. I, um, it, it was supposed to be the other way around. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I was put in a position where I, um, you know, I either left it now or, <laughs> mm. uh, well, okay, what, what I mean, there was a, a gentleman who came to the corporation and he was very disrespectful to Mr. Bridgewater. Let me say this right on the radio. He was very disrespectful to Mr. Bridgewater. I couldn't take that either. He was disrespectful to me too. And uh, he, he thought he would just upset, you, you know, the apple cart because things were so settled. Solid waste management was one corporation, right? And all of a sudden he came, they want to make it two. Who is on my side, come here. Who is on his side, stay there. And I didn't like the disrespect to Mr. Bridgewater, but let me not mention that again. Um, let me mention the fact that Mr. Bridgewater, you spoke of sports, and I'll get back to, <laughs> to that thing again. But you, you, you spoke of sports. He got us involved in a competition, a table tennis competition out at Connery between the solid waste management, and I think it was the parks and beaches, and one other government institution. I can't remember exactly who it was. But solid waste management was represented by myself, uh, Mr. Sidney Matthew, and Mr. Bridgewater. Table tennis, right? And uh, that sort of thing he used to try to get us involved in and try to get everybody involved in. In fact, we used to meet on a Thursday night at the Newtown uh, Community Center just mm -hmm. for practicing the, uh, you know, the table tennis. And also we'll have drinks and we'll have a couple of things to eat. And the ladies got involved as well in the whole table tennis thing. Not only that, we did quite a bit of uh, domino competition with the parks and beaches and other 
um, other institutions of government and so on. But the idea was to bond us together as one. And so we, we were trying to bond, and th that was his way of uh, getting us to, to gel in terms of making teams, uh, 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 domino teams, the, 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 the table tennis teams, and so on. So it was very successful in my view. That was wonderful. Well, I was listening to a tribute on another station, mm -hmm. and somebody said they don't remember ever seeing Bridges vex, for want of a better expression. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, he was the mediator in a football situation. Yeah. And everybody, according to the post reporting, everybody went in there on the high horses, mad. I angry with you and the football association. You angry with me, and at the end of the day, everybody walk out smiling. The, and the gentleman was saying he doesn't know how Bridges got it done, Bridges but Bridges was able to just cool down and mellow down. Yes. Everybody right and walked out happy. Now, mm -hmm. the situation you mentioned, I would have asked. It. I didn't know of that, but I would have asked of it, the situations how Bridges handled situations that were tough, not so easy going. How was him when it came to that angle? See, firstly, when it seems as when he's angry, uh, he doesn't speak. Because I know I've seen him really, you know, um, angry. And he had reasons so to be. And uh, he doesn't say much under those con conditions. He normally waits that out until everything is calm and they will present himself. He hardly outbursts. He hardly have an outburst in terms of temper tantrum, in spite of how much pressure he's under. Cool, collected, no emotion. When the time is right, he will get his thing done. I mean, he was a marvelous person. And I had a conversation with, you know, with my son, Norval, the other day, and he said, Daddy, I cannot, I cannot understand what else a fellow must have in terms of qualification to be a national hero. He has affected every facet of life in St. Kitts and Nevis. Every. What other qualifications do you think a man would need to become a national hero? Maybe he, because he's not a, a politician. But this is a case, in my view. I mean, we have heard of the, the uh, Tegramantin dancers, what do we call it? Tegramantin dance he theater. He was quite involved in those things. I, I think he took them on a tour to Leeds, England, I believe, sometime back. I mean, the, the, there are so many things that this guy has done that, uh, that I don't know about. I, I can only tell you with my interactions with him mm -hmm. in terms of my working at Solid Waste Management. And um, indeed, and in fact, he, you know, he touched many lives. He touched many, many people, changed many lives, and helped many people. Well, you touched a point, you know, Mr. McCall. I didn't know of that, what you mentioned with McCall, with uh, Nava, Navi. Mm -hmm. I was speaking with someone overseas when I was telling him about this program mm -hmm. and he said he thought it's an excellent idea yeah. and he asked the question what are your thoughts about pushing for Bridges to be a national hero and that that took me off guard because I never really did think about that but here's the gentleman living in New York we are speaking via WhatsApp of course talking about it and Bridges and he was giving me some background on cricket and uh, when Bridges played at the St. Kitts and Nevis youth team in against Australia youth team mm -hmm. sometime and it was actually my uncle mm -hmm. Neville Manny Weeks okay and this Lucky. was early in the week when I was telling him mm -hmm. about that program and he was the one who said well have you ever considered Bridges pushing or recommending Bridges so I came here to ask you that as a question Okay. What are your thoughts about it? Yes, the only national heroes we have had so far are politicians. Are politicians. Yes. And Uncle Neville, Manny Weeks, I call him Uncle Neville, mm -hmm. obviously, he said, I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to get some pushback. So I asked him, why? Bridges, same thing. I said, I think Bridges really deserve it. But he said, yes, but what are you going to tell the fans of El Comido Willet, the first division to make the West Indies team? What are you going to tell the first Leeward Islander? Well, the uh, correction. Thank you. First the first Leeward, Leeward Islander, Islander to right. make division team back that in 1978. Right. What are you going to tell? 73 or 78? 
78 uh, or 73? 73. Okay, I know it's in the 70s. Not Maybe 78. I'm getting mixed up with the netball in the 78. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you might, but we, we can confirm that. Mm -hmm. It might have been 71 <laughs> if, I, if, uh -huh. if I could remember. Okay. Correct. Anyway, uh, let me know. So, Uncle Neville, he said, well, you're going to have a problem mm -hmm. with the fans and supporters for Kim Collins, who are pushing a case for Kim Collins to be a national hero. And I said, why, Uncle Neville, you're right. You know, you're making a lot of sense. But then I told him, but that's not all. We're going to have a problem with the fans of King Elimat. This is me telling him now. Mm -hmm. The fans of King Elimat who believe that King Elimat should have already been uh, a national, a national hero. hero. Okay. Okay. So we went on and I said, I asked him, well, do you think we are at the level, the maturity level to have four national heroes in one year at one well, they don't have to. Uh, um, I, well, I don't know about the... Yeah. The processes the space, right, and the policies right. about yes. it. If there's a, a maximum number you could have in any one year, I don't know. And I think if there's a need and it is seen fit. But so he said, and the, uh, the discussion we would have had earlier this week was the fact that Elimat, mm -hmm. El Comido Willett, mm -hmm. Kim Collins, yeah, yeah. and Al the late Alfonso Bridgewater, mm -hmm. all made we, they should become yeah. national heroes. Yeah. Yes, but you're going to be challenging because they're not politicians and all our national heroes are politicians. Well, I, I don't know what the criteria time break is. We, we break away from that, really. Yes, I don't know what the criteria really is mm -hmm. to become a national hero. But I, whatever the criteria is, I believe Bridget falls uh, within, within, within all of it. Within all of it. Exact, exactly. In my view. And I support that 100%. Yeah. I have nothing against uh, Ellie Mac because he has made his contribution. Kim Collins has made us proud many times. And um, El Camino Willett yes. has done great, you mm. know, in my view. All should become national heroes, but I, I really believe, I, I don't know if there's a, a set criteria. There, there will be. What I it is, I'm not too certain. Okay, I don't know. And uh, I'm not certain how long the process takes. By that I mean, if you have to make a nomination in this year, mm -hmm. and it can only be done in the following year or I whatever, I don't know the time period. But I think it has to be done with maybe the Ministry of National Security or, or something like that, through some government ministry, obviously. But I, I support the view. I really like the idea when Uncle Levin was telling me about Bridges being a, a national hero. And I really didn't look at it, didn't look at it at that way. before mm -hmm. that point. Yeah. But he didn't have to sell me because from the time he mentioned it, Yes. I actually build myself, boy, I'll be you full of nonsense. You should come up with a long I should have come up with that <laughs> idea a long time. <laughs> and I tell yes, him so. Yes, yes. I mean, of course, we can't think about everything, but something like this with Bridges, so what I, whatever, what I can tell you is a few weeks before he passed, earlier this month, I think it was late last month, mm -hmm. I can't remember, mm -hmm. the SKNOC had a general meeting, extraordinary general meeting, and... Uh, Two things happened at that meeting. One, the St. Kitts and Nevis Aquatic Federation, they became members of the SKNOC, and okay. I congratulate Eldon Thomas, President Eldon Thomas, and his committee on that. And it was a unanimous decision. And then the discussion about recognition for bridges. And you would have seen the article about the building yes. named in his honor. honor. That's his true. And uh, I represented the St. Kitts and Nevis Table Tennis at association. that association, at mm -hmm. that meeting. Mm -hmm. And I was the one initially, and uh, forgive me, I, I don't mean to blow my own trumpet for want of a better expression, mm -hmm. but I felt so good and so proud and so honored by moving the, the motion to have the building name in the first instance, yes, Thank Bridges. Thank you very much for doing that, yes. And... Uh, so, having said that, you could see where my excitement and my passion about mm -hmm. him being a national that hero and why I was so hard on myself for not thinking about it even at that meeting. Mm. And well, only unle until Uncle Leville mentioned it many weeks for in yeah, the, the US, uh, like I said. You know, the, the management of solid waste management, uh, they had put out something as well to all, well, former employees of solid waste management and current employees, and they were picking up sig signatures so as to do much the same. That building that was built for solid waste management by Mr. Bridgewater, they want to name that building in his honor as well. And I think it should be done. 
That's a, that's a tremendous, an excellent idea. I think it should be done because, listen, that's what it, it was his vision. Um, uh, that was his baby. He, 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 he did everything possible. And some of the challenges I know he had, uh, let me say we because I was part of the whole process, uh, was to uh, secure a loan to build that building. It was difficult. No um, financing institution decided to give us a loan. The government would not sign as well because they said that becomes part of the national debt. And at the time, that was some, something that was noised abroad. And, um, and so uh, we had to do it particularly out of our palms every month. Five million dollars a building was constructed by, you know, by these people. And due to frugal management and, and, and uh, uh, proper negotiation with the, with the builders, it was done. Now, there was a government change, 2015, am I right? Correct. One minister came to me. Not with Mr. Bridgewater, he came to me personally. How on earth did Bridges build a building for $5 million and he ain't our bank, I think? I tell <laughs> him just to frugal management mm. and, 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 and um, you know, uh, uh, proper control. And um, they had this feeling that hey, maybe there's more money out there we, uh, you know, we need to see. And mm. some people seem as though they were not pleased that, he, that, that he constructed a building. That is sad. You know, um, he couldn't get government to sign for him to get a loan. Mm -hmm. So he did it as he did it. He and found no means and ways of exactly. doing it. Exactly. He found means and ways of doing it. And then when it was built, and they, 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 they realized he didn't have to pay a bank every month, then it was, then it was a problem. Then it, <laughs> it became a problem for some... Um, so we just had a problem getting money to build the, construct the building. Yes. And when it was built, he had a problem with people having a problem because he built it. That is correct. <laughs> Without owning a bank. Without owning the bank. <laughs> that's anyway. that, that's all very humorous, man. Anyway, it's, it's some humorous, but it's true. Yeah, yeah. You know, these old days they used to have this sport, cultural sport they call nigger business. Nigger business, that's right. Bad cook and them things. That should have been played Christmas. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that right. is <laughs> that is something for them to play. You would have thought that in in 2015, with the government change, mm -hmm. the, the government would have said, "Hey, come." Tell us how you get this do so we could do this we for our use program. Yeah, we could use, use it as a best practice. Exactly. And instead no. of having a problem. They seem to be having that, a problem. That sounds interesting. You're listening on the ball here at WinFM 98.9. I am Troy Biff Mills, your host. And I'm chatting with Mr. Wilman McCall, retired management staff at the Solid Waste Management Corporation, where Mr. the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater was the general manager from 2002 when Solid Waste came into to Bin. And the program is in honor of the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater. Well, um, Bridgewater was manager before that, you know. Uh, I, think, I think everything started in 1998. Okay. Um, that's where he and Sharon and, the, and, and uh, the, you know, they had a small room at the health department where they started. And then they rented this place the Am at the Amory building um, on, on New Street. Mm -hmm. And then everything started to spread out. But uh, 2002, like I said, is when he took over the collection, the collection system, of the garbage. But okay. it began since before then. Oh, yeah, the construction course. happening. That okay. is correct. That, that's yeah. wonderful. So you can call in and make your contribution to the program, to the life of the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater as a sportsman, as an administrator, as a mediator. As a human being, as a family man, and uh, I'm sure it will help to comfort the family, extend your words of condolences, the pleasant moments you would have had with Alfonso Bridgewater. And we are expecting the St. Kitts and Nevis Athletics to be in shortly to talk about their relationship with Bridges because him being president of the St. Kitts and Nevis Olympic Committee as well as the Commonwealth Games Committee and uh, every year St. Kitts and Nevis would have been represented doing some sort of international, regional mm -hmm. and or international track and field activities mm -hmm. and volleyball, beach volleyball at some point and table tennis as well in terms of the Commonwealth Games or the Pan Am Games, the NACAC Games the, the Olympics and things like that, the Carifta, et cetera, et cetera. So we're expecting the St. Kitts and Nevis Athletics. The SKNOC, they were to be here this evening as well. 
However, they've advised us that they had to have an emergency meeting this afternoon and uh, they couldn't make it, well, this evening, and they couldn't make it and they extended apologies. So chances are we're going to have them next week, God spear. We'll confirm that a little later. And uh, we, when we hear information about the funeral of the late Bridges, it's going to be, of course, shared. And I expect that it's going to be a tremendous, a tremendous funeral, a big, 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 big funeral. I'm not certain where they're going to have it, if they're going to have it in a church or if they're going to have it at Warner Park. Mm -hmm. But I would expect not only St. Kitts, but a lot of people from Nevis to be coming down from that that funeral. And I also expect a lot of dignitaries from not only the Caribbean, from the international, yeah, for the field, international organizations. Yeah. Because Bridges just had a way of making friends. Yeah, it, was a, it was a very humane person, right? Um, you, you know these sort of people that we uh, he worked with, mm. but he was concerned about them, um, about their well-being. Uh, for instance, one of the first things I know he did, he decided he ain't paying nobody no money in their hand. Money must go to a bank, so everybody must have opened an account, and uh, the money, his weekly salary, will go through the bank, and then he will go and collect his money. Um, and, uh, you, you know, that sort of helped the guys a lot. because Some of them never had a bank account, so they were it forced. empowered them. He empowered them. To, they must have a bank account, open it, and, and so on. The only time Bridges didn't help you is when you didn't, uh, you know, pay the money for your children. He ain't going to help you with that. Mm. That he, you, you know, you should know that is to be done. And so when you get in trouble with that, he tell you just move on and help you with that. But, but he has helped many. There was a, a gentleman who got ill, and one of the things that he implemented is that when one, one of us got sick, we will all visit, we will take gifts, we will do our best to make that person as comfortable, let them feel wanted. So we used to go to the hospital, you know, in, in an entourage with gifts and flowers and so on and so on. And that is the whole thing. Very humane person. And um, when, when a gentleman uh, is not heard of for a while, he gets sick, you don't hear of him. My call, go and find this guy, find out what's going on with him, find out what's happening. So I had to go to his home and find out what's going on, how are you doing, what is happening, and so on. He, he was concerned about every one of his workers, and he knew each and every one of them. I mean, the, 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 he's a very humane person. In spite of his lofty position, if you want to call it that, he was still a very humble human being. A very humble guy. Bridges. And that is a challenge managers leaders often find themselves in. They're in companies, they, whether or not they came in at the top level or they work themselves up, and then it becomes a case, oh, I am up here, and, I'm, down there. and you are down there, and it's Mr. This and Mr. That. Hey. And uh, I, I don't believe I've come across anyone with, with the kind of humility that Bridges would have had. In fact, let me explain to you. We were in Sunny Point one day. We, me and he drove to Sunny Point because we had experienced a problem down there. And uh, you know, he, he just wanted to see what the situation was. So we drove down and we parked. I parked my vehicle and we, we got on top of the truck and we went. We started to load and so on. And Bridges would mix it up with anybody. He began to throw in those drums like you can't believe. And he, so he told me how much he learned from that experience. And the respect for the guys that he worked with him went up a notch or two. Having worked that day, because we, we, we had about two hours, two or three hours, me and him behind the truck. And we trained, we, we helped the guys and so on. And at one point, a fellow almost got licked over. Mm. A car was rushing the other way, and the guys were crossing the road and so on, almost get hit. And, and those are the things that uh, you know, he looked at and tried to implement ways and means of um, protecting the guys. Even asking the driver, maybe when you need to do something, just block the road a little, let the guys walk and open up again. I mean, he, he was concerned about the welfare of his workers, basically. And he wasn't afraid going out there, picking up drums, throwing them in. He was that kind of manager. So he was a hands-on man? A hands-on guy. Hands-on guy. We went there and something, mm -hmm. <laughs> something when we finish, we don't smell very well and <laughs> nose feel greasy and everything. You wonder, you know, you wonder what, but that's just... Uh, you must know how the fellas, if you are supposed to manage people, you must know what they're going through so you yes. can implement measures to help them. Walk a mile in their shoe. Exactly. And you're not only 
talk the talk, but you walk the talk as in well. In fact, Bridges had it in his mind that every member of staff at one point, every year, once a year, spend the day with the guys on the, on the truck, even the young ladies. So some of them say, I didn't go to college to, <laughs> when <laughs> them say, I didn't go to college, uh, you know, to walk behind a garbage truck, can see. So she wasn't going. Pride, eh? Pride. Pride, but... But Bridges didn't feel he was too big to do that. And when he went with them, he tumbling garbage bins like, you know, nothing, nothing at all. And I, I really hate that, eh? Because at the end of the day, we are human beings, flesh and blood. Yes, some of us may have been more fortunate in life yes. than other persons, but it doesn't, it doesn't make us better than them at all. I, I remember <coughs> I was in a group that we were organizing and hosting Easter Rama in Sandy Point. And we had a meeting, and there was this challenge we were facing. And we got people in there with all kinds of degrees working in big air conditioned office, big companies, and big position. And we, we brainstorming. And a gentleman who does smoke and drink, because we, we had no bars, no limitations in who mm. could join the group, mm -hmm. from way up to way down. And that reminds me of a song by Willie Nelson. I have friends in very high places, yes, yes. but I also have friends in very low places mm -hmm. as well. And we in there, and we beating with heads, beating with heads, McCall. And the guy get up, get up and he, didn't, he used some colorful words. Boy, I am man full of... Mm. I got all you. I got to do is this, this, mm. that, and that, and that. And he walked out the room. And the room was silent for about two, three minutes. You know why? Tell us right. That was the solution we're looking for. Yes, yes, and yes. All, all of us just thinking, well, how come you ain't think about that? How come I ain't think about that? How come none of us in here think about that? And it came from the humblest of yeah. person that in there. Right. And I say that to say, in life, we really have to be humble. Otherwise, we will be humbled at some point. In time. In and I'm, I'm remembering this story where the body parts had an argument. Which, which part of the body should be the boss? And the eye said, well, it should be me because I see where you want to mm -hmm. go. The, the brain said, well, I process all the thinking and the comments, so it should mm -hmm. be me. The heart said, I pump the blood. Mm -hmm. The leg said, I carry you, so I should be the boss. The hand said, well, I do things, lift things, so I yeah. should be the boss. Mm -hmm. And the anus yes. said, <laughs> I should be the boss. Yeah. And everybody watched the anus and started to laugh. You, you're mm -hmm. crazy. You could yeah. never be the boss. The anus said, all right. You know, shut down shop for <laughs> yes. a couple of days, my call. Everybody gets the week start <laughs> the the eyes start to get blurry, the legs start to get wobbly, mm -hmm. the heart start to beat erratic, and everybody for you know what's going on. When they source the problem, hey, the anus shut up shop you. Yeah. Mm. So nothing happening, the process is not happening. Yes. So they came to the conclusion, hey. That's the most important. E exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I like the fact that Bridges would yeah. have walked walked the talk. And put his money where his mouth is, so yeah. to speak. Because you mentioned the staff, they would have been much more motivated yeah, by him. Yeah. You know, one of the things he did is that we used to have a lot of problems during Christmas time, for instance. Um, a lot of garbage gets left behind because during Christmas time, the garbage swells to about four times its normal size. Four or five times. Especially the week of Christmas mm. when everybody's shopping and so on. The garbage swells. And uh, we used to leave a lot of garbage out there and so on. And Bridges implemented something that the team that doesn't leave any garbage anywhere, we, they're going to be, be the beneficiaries of so many thousand dollars. Wow. Right? And uh, I think it was 3,005, somewhere around there. Eventually, the entire uh, uh, um, staff got involved. No garbage is left on a Christmas, y you know, during that week of Christmas. Everything is clean. And then, you know, it became an annual thing that every year we split up this $3,500 among the entire staff. It wasn't a lot of money, uh, you know, for each individual. But uh, the, the thing was sent home. Everything, everybody began to clean up during Christmas time. So that is why during Christmas um, it is just as, as normal. Even though the garbage is four times its normal size, mm -hmm. you don't see it because efforts are made to make sure it's collected. I'll give you a little story. I have a friend in Barbados, and they came here for a while, and they thought that St. Kitts is one of the cleanest countries I've seen. Okay. This, this was in 2016, 17. I went to Barbados, and 
they keep apologizing every time I see a pile of garbage on this side shows. Oh Lord, my call, sorry, look at all the garbage. Only since they came to Sinkits, they realized that Barbados had a little garbage, a <laughs> lot of garbage on the side roads. Interesting. Because they didn't, they didn't see garbage on the side roads. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, 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 I mean, they were impressed with the fact that no garbage was on the side roads. And St. Kitts is a clean country, and what you see, because many of the young people do not know how things were up against how things are today, they has no appreciation, they have no appreciation for the fact that St. Kitts is clean. But we are slowly regressing though, you know? Mm. We are slowly regressing. I see people throwing things up around the place, they're dropping things in, in the middle of the town and so on, and all that is what Talking Trash was geared at, helping people to, you know, not to do those things so that St. Kitts will become a clean country. One of the gentlemen who came to Solid Waste, well, to my mind, in an effort to fight myself and Bridges, tell me, St. Kitts is not the cleanest country. I say, but it's among the first five. Mm. St. Kitts is among the first five, and tell me any different. Go on the indexes and you'll see. He says, Singapore is where St. Kitts? I say, yes. That's one. That <laughs> we are, I, say, I say, we are not number one, but we are among the, the first, first five. five. And if that is not good, you tell me. I don't know what it is now, but I know back those days, we used to boast that we are a very clean country. Mm -hmm. And um, indeed and in fact, thank God for Bridges and for the things he implemented, the things he pushed his staff to do, the things he asked his members to do. I mean, every Friday, mo every Friday morning, we had a management meeting, 10 o'clock. And of course, uh, one of the things that you have to do, you come with a scripture, with a testimony, or a verse, a verse from the scriptures, and then we will pray. And then we will get into business, you know. And um, at that meeting, I learned so I learned so much, you know. And um, he used to insist that this meeting, whether he's there or not, the, the meetings were held. And um, that is what gave us the the the, uh, the go ahead to implement many of the things that we implemented, because Bridges used to ask us, "How are you with regard X Y Z?" Okay, last week we were here. Where are we at the end of this week? So you had to account. You had to account for things that, uh, you know, that, that were to be implemented by you. And if you were not doing things, then you mm -hmm. know you're going to be called out. V very important. Very important. Accountability. You're listening to On The Ball here at WinFM 98.9. We're speaking to Mr. Wilman McCall, retired management staff of the Solid Waste Corporation here in St. Kitts. And... Uh, that was managed by the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater, who passed last week. And we, this program, On the Ball, is in tribute of Bridges, not just a sportsman, an administrator, a manager, a leader, uh, someone who touched everyone's life. And perhaps we really need to consider Bridges as a national hero, because he was a treasure. And... <laughs> extremely <laughs> humble. Yeah. His humility knew no bounds, I believe. And uh, I've heard stories where, especially in the park, you go to football, and Bridges is sitting on the step behind the goal, and you might be there abusing Bridges and Solid Waste and whatever and whatever, not realizing there because he's just quiet, taking all his blows as it is. Mm -hmm. And because such was his, his humility. And... Uh, the, the way he managed, he, he really affected the culture, the thinking of persons. Of course, obviously, there would have been one or two that he couldn't touch because you could always take uh, a horse to water. You can't make it drink. Uh, you can't make it drink. Mm. So if you were to summarize everything with bridges, what would, well, I was going to say three, but what would it be one positive thing, one thing that would stand out? out of all the good examples you give when it comes to bridges? Oh boy, it is, it is hard to choose one of the so many okay, good... Okay, if you want to choose three, that's you know, okay. Four well, or five. Uh, you know, the, the, the many good things that he did and the, uh, the characteristics that he had. I mean, uh, he was very, like I said, humane. He was a very humane person. When my wife got sick, for instance, and you know, Bridges, uh, his first wife died from much the same thing as my wife. He knew the challenges. And at some time, he say, Mr. McCall, I think you need to take it early. You know, take it early and go home early and look after the lady. You know, so I had this 
I used to leave work a little early sometimes when I, you know, when I think my wife needed support, I would go early and look after her and, and so on. He, and, and, you know, he encouraged you. He encouraged me. She's sick. Take some time, look after her. Solid way saying, I miss you. Immediately, he stopped me from doing the talking trash. So I don't have that pressure to, you know, to, mm-hmm. you know, to put a program. So from the late, uh, it was early 2015, he asked me to stop. So I stopped so that I could concentrate on mm-hmm. helping her. He went guy, a guy who, you know, looked into everybody's uh, thing and see how he can help them. Wealthy and how he could help to empower exactly. and advance them. Exactly. Um, there were there were people. There was a gentleman who was sick at one point. He had, I think, he might have had cancer or some malignity in his body, and he was struggling. And um, so he called me when they asked me when last had you gone and see him. I said, well, I went to see him. I didn't like what I saw the last time, and I'm not great at visiting <laughs> sick folks, you know. But since my wife died, I, I've I've had, I think I could stomach more of it now because I've had to be with her, you know. And um, so I visited the gentleman, you know, well, you know, he died shortly thereafter. But whenever there's a funeral from people from Solid Waste, he got involved. He got the staff involved. Do a bucket. Let's all, we used to dress a certain way, we used to have a sash that we put on, and we go to these funerals, uh, f- funerals of the members of staff or family of the members of staff who died. And he encouraged that uh, quite a bit. And that is why, you know, <clears throat> several weeks ago I visited him one Sunday afternoon. And, you know, it was not, uh, not long before he died. And I saw the struggles, and I remember my struggles, you know. And I, I looked at him, and there was a song that I played on, <coughs> sorry, on Solid Waste, uh, sorry, <laughs> Radio Paradise, long years ago. Mm-hmm. It's called The River of Jordan. It was done by Evie Turnquist. And Evie said, um, at the river of Jordan, you're alone. The melody, of the, the melody of the song was so catching that I just liked the song. But, you know, when I, when I looked at the struggles my brother Bridge was having, and I, I remember this song about you're alone, I said, this, this writer had to be wrong. It had to be wrong. Because when you're alone, according to Christian Palance, uh, when you reach the river, it's the end of the road. It's like when a gambler has played mm-hmm. all his cards. There is no ret- a point of no return. You're alone? No. Psalms chapter 23, verse 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, Amen. they comfort me. So the melody, of the melody of the song is right, but the words are not right because you are not alone. Mm. David said it well. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, I'll fear no evil for thou art with me. So when I watched my brother Bridge, I said, the Lord is with him. I prayed with him. He held my hand and squeezed it. He, he understood everything. He was not alone. For the Lord was with him during those trying hours. That's it. And uh, I think that's an excellent point, Mr. McCall. Yes. For you to close it, it I, mean, I don't know if we have any napkins yes. here, Jamster, but very touching indeed. And uh, I, the, the feedback after the news spread that Bridges had gone, yeah. it, it was just, I don't know how to describe it, but everybody knew something and knew something about bridges and would have been impacted one way or the other in sport in life administration management SKNOC by bridges and hence the plea for him to be receiving the honor posthumously I think he should as a national hero Mm -hmm. and I I think if the government were to take a poll on that Mm -hmm. I think it would be overwhelming (coughs) that even ahead of the no disrespect to the El Comido Willets and the Kim Collinses and the Elimats. I, I think the cry for Bridges to be a national hero would really be much louder than the others. No re- disrespect to them again. 
and that's because of how Bridges was. And uh, he's going to be missed. Yes. There are extremely big shoes for him, for anyone to try and fill at any level. And uh, I give you the opportunity to say a few, your final words. Yes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, when we walk around St. Kitts and we look at the pleasantness of the place, the cleanliness of the place, when we look at our collection system and the fact that it is reliable, it is efficient, we should think about bridges. It was not like that before. And many people um, do not remember how it was before time. But we have to thank Mr. Alfonso Eli Bridgewater for his foresight, for his vision, and for the fact that he led Solid Waste well to a point where St. Kitts received their claim at one point as one of the cleanest countries on the planet. I hope we're not regressing. I hope we can take it from there to greater heights. But my, let me take this opportunity to express my most sincere condolences to his wife and his family and to the entire nation of St. Kitts and Nevis because we have lost an institution, if, I, if, if I'm to call it that. This guy, is, is, he was um, um, qualified in so many areas. Mm -hmm. We have lost an institution of learning. And I hope somebody would have captured something from Alfonso Eli Bridgewater. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us, Mr. McCall. And it was indeed touching. We live in those moments of Mr. Bridgewater when he, young him worked at the Solid Waste Corporation here in St. Kitts. And he became a ho household <laughs> name. Yeah. Especially for talking trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always like that name, yeah. talking trash. Talking trash. Yeah. And uh, he, persons looked at it funny, but mm -hmm. uh, being into the music and the calypso and that kind of thing, I, I just liked it, talking trash. There was a, there was a particular doctor in Bastia <coughs> who told me <coughs> one day, met, he met me at the bank. He said, look, I open my office 9 o'clock every morning. And at 8.30, he said. And he said, I tell my nurse, do not allow nobody in here until McCall and Bridges finish with talking trash. <laughs> <laughs> For he, he, he said he became accustomed to just listening to that program and just relaxing and listening to talking trash. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. McCall, we thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, well, I'm going to get into some sports now. Yes. The, the, the Lee was given away the championship and that sort of thing. And if you, you, you want to stay, and we could talk and <laughs> a little bit about <laughs> it. If you care to, I don't know. I don't know no, if Novel well, will allow you to be out so, so late. Well, I'll, uh, you know, I'll have to take his direction. Mm -hmm. But um, the, I think the Leavers the Lever gave up on an opportunity to win the championship. They, all they had to do was to draw the game against Barbados. Am I correct? Correct. Don't lose. Yeah, don't lose. And I think that they, bat they batted quite irresponsibly. In both innings, in I both thought. In both innings. And uh, in my view, they gave up the opportunity to win, I understand it's a, hun a hundred something thousand dollars for, for the 250,000 US, oh I think Lord. quarter million. Okay. And uh, I've been saying, I am not cricket of great repute. Yes, mm -hmm. I played a little cricket. Yeah. But McCall, if I did bat left, I'm a right hander. If I did bat left, I don't believe any of them Barbados bowlers could have given me up. The wicket gave no assistance, no assistance. to anyone. You Why should we have been bowled out twice? Twice in two days, just a little over. Yeah, two days. Yeah, it, 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 it is. It's a, I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I just I hope know. I hope that Makai Liu Louis makes it to the West Indies team. Well, he has an opportunity to score, and he should bat at least once. And if and if he doesn't make it, it means that this competition has no value. If you're going to tell me you're going to pick outside uh, what we saw in this competition, it means uh, you know there's no need for our for our, um, our competition. Well, you're preempting me because I would have spoken about it. If we take the first 10 in terms of batting, and I'm going to start at the top. Well, let's take the first five. <coughs> Mikael Louis, he's the only player with over 500 runs in this tournament. 540 so runs, I understand. 549. 549 runs. He played six matches. He had 12 innings. No, not out. And uh, 
highest score of 130, averaging 45.75, strike rate of 48.61. He struck 57 fours, 13 sixes. I'm not certain anybody has struck more fours than him. How many balls have he? He has um, faced 1,127 okay. balls. Okay. The so only person who may have more balls than him might be the captain for um, Barbados. Balls faced? Balls faced. Well, actually, I'm not seeing that. He has faced 1,125 balls. And the highest I'm seeing for the same Barbados, 989. Okay. So it doesn't look like anybody else faced 1,000 balls. So he's looking good. He has four half centuries and two centuries. 57 fours, yeah. 13 sixes. Uh, Mr. Mills, I think I'll have to go. Your guests are uh, coming. So thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Well, Appreciate yes, sir, but... Thank you for the invitation. I, I, I think Lee was, would have given it up. But yes. before you run off and before we invite him, they are actually in fourth place now. Yes. And, yeah, and even if they win the next match, what, what position would I put them? Well, third. Yes. I yeah. think as it is right now, the... Diggity, diggity, diggity. Winwood Islands, they are still leading. Yeah. Second yeah. is Barbados. Third, yeah. Guyana fourth. The win the the Leewards. The thing is it. Three teams have their destinies in their hand. The Winwood Islands, they're playing Leewards. If they beat Leewards, they win. they win the championship. Guyana. They are coming up against the combined campuses. And the component, ca component campuses and colleges, they have not been doing too well. That game is at Sir Frank Worrell Memorial Ground, St. Augustine in Trinidad. The Leewards will be locking horns with Windward Island's Queen Park Oval, Port of Spain. Barbados Pride, they come up against w Windy West Indies Academy, a Coolish cricket ground in Antigua, and the academy, they have not been performing that well. Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica will be engaging at Sabina Park in Kingston. That is just academic reasons, re purposes, really. And uh, the Leewards, had they not lost the game, even a draw, they would have been in that position to, to win. And it, it, it's really unfortunate. But hey, we have to wait and see how that works out. And if we look at the... Oh, we'll get back to the... The points table. Okay. Then let us take it while we are here. The Jamaica Scorpions, they are actually at the bottom of the table. The combined campuses, pardon me, they've lost all six matches. However, they have they have not gotten a point, not even a bonus point. Jamaican Scorpions in seventh. They have won two lost four. They have 24 points. The West Indies Academy, they've won to last four. They have 24 points as well. Trinidad and Tobago, Red Force in fifth. They've won three, draw, lost two, drawn one. So they have 39 points. Leeward Islands, they've won four, lost two. They have 48 points. I don't think these points are quite correct. Something is missing. And I have to confirm that because I'm seeing all four teams. Guyana with 48 points, Barbados Pride 48, Windward Islands 48, Leeward Islands 48. So the net run rate, I'll have to contact my statisticians. I'm not certain how correct it is. But it's going to be an interesting cricket week. And we have our guest, Stick and Stay. We're going to take a little break. Don't go away. We'll be right back here on On The Ball with the St. Kitts Nevis Athletics. So stick and stay. We'll be right back with you in a second or two.
Welcome back to On The Ball here at WinFM 98.9. I am Troy Biff Mills, your host, and I thank you for tuning in and being with us tonight. We are now going to be... We're still in the honoring mode, in tribute of the late Alfonso Bridgewater. Tonight's edition of On The Ball is, in, is honoring him for the work he would have done, period. We've just heard from Mr. Wilman McCall, a retired management staff at the Solid Waste Management Corporation. He would have worked with Alfonso Bridgewater. And we're now joined by Mr. Delwain Delaney, mm -hmm. president of St. Kitts and Nevis Athletics, as we go to studio two and say, good evening, Delwain. Welcome to on the ball here at WinFM 98.9. Yes, good evening, Joy, and good evening to all the listening audience this evening. You've been here so often, so regularly, <laughs> I think I must start to have you as my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> right, indeed. On behalf of the management staff, board of directors of WinFM 98.9, on behalf of the On the Ball program and my family and my personal behalf, Extend condolences to the St. Kitts Nevis mm -hmm. Athletics, whom Bridges would have been working close with over time immemorial from whenever. Yes. When are your first memories mm -hmm. of coming across Bridges? Um, perhaps maybe around maybe 2002 or day about when, when I traveled to El Salvador the then maybe CAC games yes uh, maybe around 2002 and then yes around 2002 or 2003 El Salvador and then at, at the Pan American Games in 2003 in, San, uh, in Santo Domingo and from there you know we started to develop uh, a good relationship as an athlete you know I always give words of encouragement words of ad advice he always have this way of motivating the athletes, you know, in, in this particular way, you know, strange ways. I remember one time, I think, we invited him to the Conway football team. Or uh, it might have been the national team. One, one of the teams, though. And he made us stand in a circle, lock off our, the lights in the, in the room, and everybody just had to think about the purpose of why they're here, why they do what they do, you know, whether it be um, what, what, what is your why? Why do you compete? Why do you, why do you participate in sports? Why are you here? You know, and, and it gives us, give, gave you a sense of purpose and, and, and inner, inner thought. It, it, it forced you to, to think deep. You know, you're not just here for sports. You're here representing a country, a club. You're here representing yourself and your family. And, you know, you want to make yourself feel proud. And, and these are the memories that now you could pass on to either your, 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 your kids or your persons that you come in contact with. And these are life lessons, you know. And, and that's one of the things that and admired about um, Mr. Bridgewater that he, 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 he always have time to lend, you know? Although he might be the president of SKNOC, if you call him, he'll make the time, you know? No matter how small you might think, and you say, but I know that, that we can't go call the president for that. No, you can call the president for that mm. because he'll avail himself. Yeah, that's interesting. So you would have been with him uh, 22 years, the last 22 t two years there about, because mm -hmm. you're the president of SKN Athletics. Right. And as recently, well, he would have been ill for the last few whatever period, but he would have been uh, traveling with the, the team to carry the games as well? Um, not so not much. Not as of the recently. No, not so much carry the games, but... When we do travel to the games, so whether it be the Pan Am Games, the CAC Games, the okay. Olympic Games, he'll be there, you know. And I said, 
Although, you know, when you're at those games, you get the presidential treatment, you know, you get the red carpet roll out. But he, 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 he was never one to, to make you feel that, you know, you can, he, he's not approachable, uh, uh, you know. He, he always is there, even means that, you know, for instance, at, at the Olympic Games, you, you eat different, as a president, you know, you have your own accommodations and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And oftentimes he'll come to, to our camp and see how we, we are and see how we live in and, and eat breakfast with us, lunch with us, or dinner with us, whatever the case is. And, you know, get that, that feel, you know, of, of bonding. And, and, you know, while other presidents, you don't see them in the cafeteria eating, even doing what we eat in there somewhere at some five-star hotel or restaurant mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. And, and that was who he was, you know. As I said, he, he was never... You too big to 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 be around us and 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 you know share his own experiences whatever they may be. Human beings, especially kitchens and divisions, we. I don't believe we we are free to speak our minds, so to speak. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we come up with with some friction between us, discussions, disagreement. Mm -hmm. Did you have many disagreements with Bridges, and if so, how did they work out? Oh, I, I I can't say I had disagreements with with with, with Bridges. I, I really can't. Um, you were always tend to when he speaks, you, you 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 try as much as possible to take in what he's saying. You know, so you 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 never rebutting what he's saying, whether or not you feel <laughs> <laughs> it was nonsense. Or you you know, mm -hmm. he's a man with with a wealth of knowledge. So whatever he speaks, it must be it must worthwhile. So you you. You you stand at attention. You 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 sit up in the chair. If you're sitting down and 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 you you all ears and eyes in into what he's saying, because he always have a way of putting over his his his, his he, however he demonstrates and 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 mm. you know and and those those things you know resonated with us. I mean, after the, our meeting, what we had with the NOC. Myself and myself and Virgil, we went right after the meeting to see him. And although he was, you know, sick and so on, he still, with his light moments, you know, asking me, you know, I hope they stop fighting now, meaning, you know, <laughs> the, the situation <laughs> at the interschool, and, mm. and, you know, we laugh it off and thing. You know, and, and he was light, you know, and Virgil said, I'm going to sing a song for you. And he said, oh, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> you know, and, and, and he always ha have that light Ness a, a, a about him, you know, even unto death, you know, he, he still um, was able to, to smile and, 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 and be cheerful uh, amidst uh, of it all, you know. Uh, he, he was a tremendous individual, a tremendous human being. Yes, yes. Not only in the, the sport as an administrator, an athlete, but ju ju just a human being. How... How much do you see this, his loss, his going to the great beyond, affecting one, the landscape here in St. Kitts and Nevis, mm -hmm. and particularly that SK and OC, SK and track and field? Mm. How big are the shoes uh, that the he's leaving to be filled? The, 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 I mean, the, the NOC is equipped with, with, with great persons, right? But, I mean, when you, when you talk about Mr. Bridgewater, um, is, is, is next level type of thing. And it's, it's evident even throughout the Caribbean, he's well respected at, um, at the, the regional level, at the Panam level. Um, I mean, I've seen tributes from Pan American sports, from Anosis and Canuck and, you know, all these regional and international bodies, you know, recognizing the work that he that he has done over over the years. I mean, when you hear the stories even before I was born, how he would have been instrumental with, with the netball team. Um, I think he was part of the netball team that won the Caribbean. Yes, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And and so you, you you see that he has transcended time because whereas many of those persons uh, would have, you know, moved on from sports, you know, to, to different pathways and so on. He stuck with it. He 
I mean, I, I'm not certain how many years he, he has been in sports uh, so integral, but he had to be well over 50, 60 years, you know what I mean? Uh, and not just, uh, I mean, like playing sports, but I mean, really giving his time and, and effort and, and to, to the sport, to sports on a whole. And he was not particularly to any one sport. He, I he mean, was he, a sportsman. He was a sportsman, yeah. He mm -hmm. was a sportsman, and, and that's what the NOC ultimately is, is about, you know, to develop all sports. And he was the perfect person to, to lead the way. In, indeed, and uh, it's. I I was listening to a program on another station, and somebody did say they don't ever recall seeing Bridges vex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ever had that experience of seeing him vex, so to speak, <sighs> as old people would say? Um, I've seen him got loud. Um, he. He, he has, when 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 he wants to bring over a point, a strong point, mm. he'll get loud and get his his, his fingers in the ear, mm. right, and say, "Look, you know." He has a, he always saying, "Look," that that was one of his favorite <laughs> words, <laughs> when, when, right? <laughs> Look, and mm. when you know, and then he'll say, "You know, what I believe this is? and that and that and that and mm. you know, Pas being passionate yes, about yes. his point." Yes, so yes. I don't. I haven't seen him. I've never seen him in an altercation with with anybody in terms of back and forth and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. As I say, when he was so respected that when when he, he speaks, he, he, he just listen. listen. He mm -hmm. just listen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, he he can command a room, no doubt about that. Um, he, he 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 his way of 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 putting over things. He he knows the audience that he's dealing with. And so whether it be footballers, whether it be persons um, of different stature, or, or economic background, he, he knows how to, how to reach, he reach them. He knows what message to, 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 to bring forth to these, these group, particular groups. So he's always aware of the audience and always. He, possessed, he possessed the skills and the technique to get in to impact them to get yeah, in his and I feel, I feel some of the things he, he just he, he don't be planned I, I think he just show up and say hey this is what I'm going to do after scanning the room and, and you know feeling the room feeling the vibe in the room and say hey okay this is what I'm going to do and, and, and that that is a special skill because persons might have something planned and they can't deviate because they're just one dimensional, but he wasn't. He wasn't. Unfortunately, we only have about two, three minutes left. Mm. But if you were to pick your three best experiences, most memorable moments with Bridges, interacting with Bridges, what would they be? Um, I would say perhaps two as an athlete and maybe one as an administrator. Um, 2012 Olympics, um, he, as I said, he would have, amidst all the controversy, if you recall the 2012, mm -hmm. 2012 Olympics in London, with the, you know, mm -hmm. um, and being able to be firm in his, in, in his decision, um, amidst all the controversy, um, shows great leadership, um, I would say as well at the 2007 Pan American Games in Brazil, again while he was there, you know we got to see the lighter side of of Bridges in terms of us, you know, hanging around and 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 you know really enjoying the meet, and 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 that as and as an administrator, you know he would always reach out to me and say, hey Delwyn, I'm thinking about. Um, meeting with all the member federations to get a feel about as to what you, what you guys need to push your sport forward, what are some of the, the challenges that you are facing. And I, 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 I took that with openly because some of the times as administrators we feel that we know what, what the other person wants and so we'll just say here, here, here. 
and not understanding and not taking the time out to have that sit down and for him to make the time to say hey let's have some one on one i think at the time if i'm not mistaken the the N noc was used uh, utilizing the upstairs of the of Seymour building Seymour's building mm -hmm. at the time and so for us to have that one on one interaction you know with a athletics and helping us to forge the way forward i think was was very good at, of him a great an initiative uh, actually Delwyn, unfortunately, we have to close it down. It's now just a few minutes before 9 o'clock. Right. And uh, we do appreciate the fact that you took time out to be with us here at On The Ball, Win FM 98.9. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, on behalf of the management and staff board of directors at Win FM and on the, the On The Ball Radio Sports on my personal behalf and my family extend condolences to your association and the, the family, friends who are all grieving the tremendous loss of uh, the late Alfonso Bridges, Bridgewater. Thank you. So best wishes. Anything, final thing you would want to say? Yes, um, I just want to, my, on behalf of SKN Athletics and myself, want to extend condolences as well to the sporting community, the friends and family of Mr. Bridgewater, um, a former athlete who, who is close to athletics, um, his son, um, Alke, Alconas Bridgewater as well too. You know, and so we 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 feel we, we mourn with you um, in, at this point in time, and um, let his memory live on through sports, and let us continue the great work that he would have wanted us to do here in the St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you very much, Delwyn, and best wishes to you and your association once more. Thank you, and to the family, be strong. Thank you. That was Mr. Delwyn Delaney, president of St. Kitts and Nevis Athletics, sharing his interaction with, Bo with Bridges, Delayed Bridges, over the past few years. As we prepare to slip away, just to give you an update in terms of the point standings in the Premier League, all teams have played seven matches. Trafalgar South Stars, they're still on a comb. They're yet to get a point. Skellig Garden Hotspurs winning one, losing two. Winning one, drawing two, losing four. They have five points. Sol Island, Connery in eight with eight points. Winning two, drawing two, losing three. Hot Spins, Bad United in seventh. Winning three, losing four. They are nine points. Six is Honda Newtown United. Winning three, drawing one, losing three. They are on ten with a goal difference of minus two. Ahead of Development Bank St. Peter's in fifth. Also winning one, winning three, drawing one, losing three, a goal difference of minus one. They are on ten points. Fourth is four four GK on Rockets, winning three, drawing three, losing one, twelve points. They have a goal difference of four. Rams Village Superstars, winning four, losing three. They have twelve points. There are only two teams that have not lost a match as yet. In second place. Montreville Farms, Clean Right United, Old Road Jets, winning three, drawing four. They have 13 points. SL Horsford, St. Paul's United, out front, leading the pack at this stage, winning six, drawing one. And they have 19 points. The teams with the most goals we have, it is, well, three a three-way tie. St. Paul's, Old Road, and Village all scoring 16 goals. But... Hessel Horsford St. Paul's, they're mising again, only giving up two goals. In terms of the goal scorers, Kimari Rogers, six goals, Rams Village Superstars, five goals apiece for Kelanji Clark, Keith Wifeman of Hessel Horsford St. Paul's, and Shaheen Prentice of Floor Forgy Keon Rockets. And if we take a quick peek at the first division in terms of the points, and hey, there's a, there was a big game today. And these points are before. They actually all played six matches. Jones Group, Sandy Point, 16 points out in the front, a goal difference of 17 ahead of Security Forces. Second place, 16 points, a goal difference of 14. Fast Cast Saddlers United, they gave somebody 16 nil. Rivers, I think it was. So they are in third with 12 points, a goal difference of 33. Trans Global Engineering, Dave Bay Eagles, fourth, a goal difference of 19, the same 12 points. Mantab, 11 points in fifth. Conway Fireballs, 9.6. Molyneux, 7 points in 7th. KFC Trinity Challengers, 1 point in 8th. Uh, from a drawn game, Rivers of Living Water, 1 point 
in ninth, a goal difference of minus 41, where Trinity have a goal difference of minus 34. And Lodge Patriots, still on a comb, 607, they are yet to score a goal. In terms of the matches coming up, actually there were some big matches today. And uh, da -da 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 -da. if you just give me a second, let me pull it up here, appointments. We have today, I haven't heard the scores as yet, from Jones, Sandy Point, and Security Forces. That's a battle at the top. And uh, also, coming up at 8 p.m., that game, Connery Fireballs, KFC Trinity Challengers. That was played at the Technical Center. Tomorrow, the Female League has started. So, Queen City Ballers coming up against Rams Village Lady Superstars Technical Center, the third and final semifinal match. Wednesday Division 1, Saddlers, Diet Bay. Molyneux Rivers are at 6, Saddlers, Diet Bay at 8. Thursday Division 1, Lodge Mantab at 8, te All Technical Center. Premier League Friday, Bath versus Newt Newtown. In Nevis, 8 p.m. at on Saturday, Warner Park, 6 p.m. Spurs versus Keon, 8 p.m. Village versus Superstars, and uh, on Sunday, South Stars versus Development Bank St. Peter's, 5 p.m. at Warner Park. You've been listening to On the Ball here at Win FM 98.9. I am Troy Biff Mills, your host. It was indeed my pleasure being here under not so pleasurable circumstances. We had the program in tribute of the late Alfonso Bridges Bridgewater and uh, on behalf of management, staff, the board of directors of WinFM on the ball sports program and myself and my family we extend condolences to the family of the late Bridges Alfonso Bridgewater friends, colleagues, co-workers everyone whose life he has touched and find comfort in the fact that Bridges has made a tremendous contribution here to all of us here in St. Kitts and Nevis, the Caribbean, further afield. And we ask you to be strong in your moment of your bereavement. And I invite you to join us again next week, God Spear, 7 o'clock here at WinFM 98.9 for another edition of On The Ball. Thank you very much for listening. It was my pleasure being with you. We thank our guest, Mr. Wilman McCall who worked with Bridges at Solid Waste as well, and Mr. Delwyn Delaney, President of St. Kitts and Nevis Athletics. As I slip away, always be positive in your thoughts, in your words, and your actions. Have a good evening. See you next week. Choose the Godspeed.